Zulu family. Tank Commander Zulu back at you once again and that Real Man Movement. Today here at the Real Man Movement, we're going to be dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, combat connected PTSD, and living in the land of the coronavirus. Our veterans who have combat connected PTSD dealing with the environment that the coronavirus has created. Let's talk about it here today with Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement. Gas, gas, gas. Fire in the hole. Salute family, it's Tank Commander Zulu back at you once again and that Real Man Movement. Today here at the Real Man Movement, we're going to be dealing with PTSD and coronavirus. But before we get into the topic of discussion, I would like to invite everyone to become a subscriber to the channel. If you are not a subscriber, I invite you to become a subscriber today. And when you watch the videos, give them a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated by the Tank Commander. I would also like to advise everyone to become a subscriber to Dante's Boxing Nation. If you like boxing, combat sports, journalism, then it's time for you to go over to Dante's Boxing Nation and subscribe today. And there'll be a little bit more about Dante and Dante's Boxing Nation at the end of this video. So make sure you stay for the entire video and get that bit of information. Now back to the topic of discussion. PTSD and the coronavirus. What times are we really living in? You know, as a combat veteran who suffers from combat-connected PTSD, it's a kind of funny time right now. A lot of people may not be able to understand this or be able to make the connection to what I'm about to say. But if you know someone who is a combat veteran or someone who is suffering from PTSD, you need to be on the lookout for some signs that they're struggling in this particular environment that the coronavirus has created. Well, I guess the question would probably be from someone who doesn't understand combat connected PTSD. And what I mean by combat connected, I mean that people who are veterans, combat veterans, who served on the front lines or who were uh, engaged in combat situations or saw a mass amount of death in the combat zone. How are those soldiers, because we're still soldiers to, to this day, how are we dealing with the environment that the coronavirus has created? Well, I can tell you one thing. My symptom management right now has been heightened, is at an all time high. And let me explain why. You see, everybody's running around with masks and, and things trying to protect themselves from the coronavirus because we don't really understand in its totality how you can be affected by it, how you can encounter it, and how you can become a victim of it. How can it be transferred or transmitted to you uh, through human contact or is it through the air? Is it from surface uh, interactions? All, all type of things. There's still a lot of questions out there. And yeah, the government's doing what they can do as far as trying to inform us. But for those of us who are suffering, suffering from PTSD, let me explain this and make it, make it clear to everybody. There is a condition when you're in the military, you're in combat. It's called a nuclear biological chemical. That's a, that's a direct threat on every soldier that's in combat. NBC, nuclear biological chemical. In order for frontline soldiers and soldiers in general who may possibly come in contact with the NBC, nuclear biological chemical threat, 
we have what's called a mission-oriented protective posture. MOP, M-O-P-P, mission-oriented protective posture. And what that simply is, is the, it's the chemical suit that we wear, and it has MOP 1, MOP 2, MOP 3, and MOP 4, with MOP 4 being the greatest level where you have all of your equipment on. Now we're talking about MOP 4 because when we're talking about the coronavirus right now, people are pretty much running around in MOP 4. That's how I see it as a combat veteran. Let me explain MOP 4 to a lot of you people who may not know nothing about being in MOP 4. MOP 4 is one of the most uncomfortable, one of the most uncomfortable positions to be in. Along with everything else that a combat soldier has to carry. You're not only carrying all of that that weight, but you're also in a charcoal suit. You're in boots, over your boots. You have a gas mask on. In my, in, in my particular MOS, it's an M25 gas mask. I mean, you literally have the gas mask on where your breathing is compromised. But it's necessary to have on to protect yourself from the nuclear, biological, chemical threat. We're talking about MOP4, Mission-Oriented Protective Posture, the highest level. Many times when I was in Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia Kuwait, and Iraq, we were in MOP4. Now it's 125 degrees weather. I want you to think about this. 125 degrees outside in the shade. The M8 alarm goes off. And what an M8 alarm is, it's supposed to detect nuclear biological chemicals. Well, it went off every day. When I tell you every day, that M8 alarm went off. It was being triggered by whatever. They say it wasn't nothing. Maybe it was. We don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. We stayed in MOP 4 on that front line. Majority of the time, we were in MOP 4. That means we were living in a mask with all of the protective garments on, gloves, covers over our shoes, and the mask. Not able to come out of that mask because it was uncertain if the environment was safe. You see, this is what a lot of you people got to understand about PTSD. The, the individuals aren't just the enemy. In combat, it's just not another person who's the enemy. Sometimes the enemy can create an atmosphere that also becomes your enemy. It's just like when I was in Bosnia, the ground became my enemy. And I lost friends over there. To the ground, you become actually paranoid of walking on ground. Right now, the conditions that the coronavirus has created with everybody running around in masks, it's some pe in gloves. It automatically brings me back to the combat zone. In times where we were in MOP 4, I'm talking about with protective masks, gloves, a MOP suit, the entire deal. You're sweating so much, you, you, you're so thirsty, and the only way you can drink water, now listen to this. The only way you can drink water safely in a nuclear, biological, chemical environment is through an apparatus that you got to connect to your canteen and drink through your mask. You can't take that mask off. You're drinking water through an through a, through a apparatus that's similar to a straw that connects to the top of your canteen, and that's the way you drink water. You want to break the seal on your mask so bad just to get some deep fresh air but you can't it's a state of misery at the same time when that M8 alarm goes off you're thinking about did I get my mask on in time did I dawn and clear this mask in time before this chemical possibly got to me you see that's what a lot of veterans right now are dealing with those of us who are suffering from PTSD you see, we don't have no problem with social distancing because 
Almost thankfully, one of the symptoms of PTSD is isolation. Kind of have a problem with crowds. You don't want to really be around a whole bunch of social activity, whereas, whereas multiple people from the beginning. And I had to deal with that. I really have to deal with that. So some of the things that I'm seeing and, and, and hearing, one thing I don't like to do, and I, don't, I, I know that it's necessary to be informed what's going on in the world, in the world but I do not like to watch the news too much. But my wife does. She kind of keeps it on CNN. So at times I got to turn it or I got to distance myself away from it because this thing brings me right back to the combat field where everybody's running around in protective masks, in MOP 4, mission-oriented protective posture for the highest level you can be. Anytime you in MOP 4 or at MOP 4 level, that means that the threat is real. The threat of a chemical agent infiltrating the atmosphere and you ingesting that agent, that, that, that potential is strong. Your very life can be on the line. Listen, on that front line, we had to take nerve agent pills. We had to take all types of injections, uh, anthrax injections, and all of that kind of stuff to safeguard ourselves from the possibility of a chemical strike being put on us by the Iraqi regime at that time, which was Saddam Hussein. At that particular time, we didn't know what he had capabilities of doing in the area of a chemical attack. You see, war plays psychological games on you. It's not only what you can see or hear. Sometimes it's what you can you just taking the next breath can be an attack against you. And so for all my brothers and sisters who may be dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder that's combat connected and we're seeing this mass amount of death right now, you can be drugged right back into that combat field. And I want to go ahead and stop and I want to salute all the first responders and those in the healthcare industry those are the frontline soldiers right now in this war against this coronavirus. There are people right now who haven't, they've been trained to see death at a certain level, but now they're seeing death at a greater than, level than they've ever seen in their life. People that they love are just dying right in front of them. It's not being done by a human being. But the atmosphere of the coronavirus, that threat is just like a biological threat to a combat soldier if you've ever been there. And listen, all of these, all of these pictures and scenes of individuals in what I call MOP4, anytime they're dealing with the coronavirus at a personal place or dealing with people with it, you see people in almost the same kind of mission-oriented protective posture as soldiers are. So your mind can't help but go right back to it. To where your heart beats fast. To where you almost struggle to breathe. Because you remember being in that, in that Mop 4 posture for so long, waiting to get the all clear. And once the all clear comes, that got to be authenticated. So you can get it all clear, but you got to wait another time, another period of time for the authentication of that all clear before you can take that mask off. Dying for breath. Because it's, it's laborers breathing inside of an M25 protective mask. That automatically triggers. It can't, and no, it triggers me. It can trigger combat veterans who suffer from PTSD. The fact that many people don't know that or realize it, don't forget about these veterans. Don't forget about us. Don't forget about and don't forget about having sympathy about what we may be going through right now at this particular time. Salute to my my veterans who put their life on the line. It's not nothing for no one to disrespect. You should respect the fact 
that a man and a woman put their life on the line for you. And you have the right to feel how you want to feel about America. That's, that's fine. But make sure that you really understand what the sacrifice was all about. And how we're still impacted by it today. But I definitely want to want to give a salute to all those first responders. Uh, those who work in the healthcare industry. Nurses. Doctors. Who have fallen victim on the front line. So you start to see death at a, at a different level. It's not simply somebody coming in with gunshot wounds. Not simply someone dying from cancer. Now someone's dying from a virus. They were healthy 24 hours ago. Now, two days later, they're dying. But it's not for us to be fearful. Just for us to be thoughtful. You know, one of the things that keep me above my, my PTSD symptoms is symptom management. One of the strongest forms of symptom management for me is the Holy Bible. You know the word of God says. In the book of Psalms. Psalms 91. Verses 9 through 10. The Bible says. If you say the Lord. Is my refuge. Think about it. And you make the most high. Your dwelling. No harm. Will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. You see what God promises in that, in that scripture? Once again, it's Psalms 91 verses 9 through 10. If you say the Lord is my, my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Listen, I live off of that. Because in all three combat zones, death almost tried to overtake me. I encountered death multiple times. Even to the fact where death missed me and hit the person next to me. But I've learned to make God my refuge. And to all my brothers and sisters who may be suffering with combat connected PTSD. I suggest you make God your refuge. In this time where you can't get out to the VA. Where it's almost dangerous to go see about any conditions or situations you may be dealing with. Don't look at that gun and think about putting it in your mouth. Make God your refuge. Make God your protection. Make him your symptom management. Trust me. It's working for me. But I do have to tell you. This particular environment that the coronavirus has created, it does trigger my PTSD. And I know that I'm not the only one. So family, I want you to keep in mind, if you know a veteran who's been in combat, they're going to be able to tell you about what MOP4 is. They're going to be able to tell you about NBC, what that means and what that is. They're going to be able to tell you about decon sites. I myself had to go through a decon site because we were in an area infested with an NBC. A nuclear biological hazard. To where you have to physically go through your body being deconned, your equipment, everything you own being decontaminated. Before you can go back and then there's still a waiting period before you, you can be integrated back with any other people. Is that what we're heading to towards? You see, many people don't understand that. Let's hope and pray that's not where we're heading. It's a miserable life. It's something that you don't want to have to endure. But we are at combat, family. And being in combat, we have to live by the rules of engagement. We engage this time with prayer. Consider Psalms 91, 9 and 10. It's the only thing to keep us safe, family. That's all we are in need of today. Take care of yourself. Be careful. And remember the veterans who served on that front line. And with that, family, I'm going to stop the tank. But before I go, I want to give another shout out to Dante's Boxing Nation, baddest brand in the land, and all of the DBN family. Look, 
What Dante is offering over at Dante's Boxing Nation is wonderful. He's offering an opportunity for YouTube creators, for artists, for journalists, for those who are in the music industry. Whatever you may be doing, whatever product you may want to push and promote, Dante Boxing Nation is there to help and support. He helped this channel. He helped Tank Commander Zulu grow from 200 subscribers. And I'm now looking at over 1,100 subscribers. And the tank just keep growing and growing. Salute to all of my subscribers in the DBN family and what Dante's doing. And with that family, remember... Fear no man but God, baby. No man but God. Tank Commander Zulu signing out.